I just want to ask you a question. You got seven months to live, you got cancer, and you're a millionaire. What would you do that time, man? Eh? My loved ones, maybe try and set my loved ones up. First of all, I would pay up all my parents' debts and mortgages. I would, I would actually uh, give it to the, the poor and the needy. Oh man, just enjoy your life, go traveling. I want to spend as much time as possible with my family. Make sure that everyone else has got a good life. Uh, I'd give um, money for the children, all different nationalities, for the schools, the education. Just see whatever you want to see and buy things you want to buy, right. just enjoy your life. Go travelling all around the world, is it all the place better? I'd have a look at um, how I could change charities that are doing things to better for the children for the tomorrow. cancer and how I try and support the foundation that was uh, the body behind that, that cancer organisation. I've got a friend of mine, his name is Ali Banat, yeah. and he's got seven months to live. And he's basically the same hypothetical situation that I just told you. I want to share your story and let me know what you think. Muslims Around the World Project. The organization wasted no time in the construction of a masjid and a school in Africa to serve as an ongoing charity for him. God, that's incredible. What a guy. Yeah. I yeah, really moving and it's it's perfect just donations to help other people. It's perfect. Just uh, this look he's look he's right to, to do what he's doing. It's something just so human and intrinsically like invaluable with what he's doing. Um, and it's a reminder to us all as well, like you're right, we can't take all this stuff with us and there is so much more to life. Um, and yeah, my heart goes out to him, I'm just really moved by what he's doing and I think it's a message to us all to kind of no, we can pick up our game and remember that we're alive and cherish life. He's, he's reminding us. Of us. He's reminding us that. Kind of just echo his views, to be honest. Right. You know, all those material things don't really matter. And so long as you're a good person, and that's what you take with you in the end. But... It's pretty inspirational because I didn't expect him to be spending his last, what, seven months like giving to people. I thought he'd be going out and like cherishing and doing what he's never done before. So yeah, it's a bit of a surprise. Incredible work, good luck with everything. Hope you cherish everything that you're doing right now and God bless. Hey mate, uh, my name is Herman and I'm from Germany. And I see uh, the video uh, of you with your uh, cancer and I just wish all the best things for you and you're doing it right with the donations. He's doing some really amazing things, you know, that's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's pretty admirable what he's doing. Um, that he's not just blowing all his money away um, and instead using it to help other people. Well, Ali, I must say. Why did you invest your money in MATW? You could have done so much with your money. Well, the main reason why I invested my money in MATW was because I realized that nothing in this world will benefit me. And the only thing that will benefit me was to help other people, to put smiles on the faces of little kids. Something that I can leave behind as a legacy that will benefit me in the hereafter, inshallah. Why is the organization called MATW Muslims Around the World? And what's the significance of this name? Well, pretty much I was sitting down and um, thinking of a name to come up with. And I sort of got the first letter from a couple of individuals in my family and come up with MATW. For example, M stands for my sister Mariam. A is for Ali, and there's just a couple of different other names that I put this together. So. If you were to tell the audience what the project in brief is about, and what do you see, and how do you see the project, inshallah, in the future? What are, uh, what are your aspirations for this project? Because it was such 
overwhelming response from the people. I decided instead of building separate things all over Africa to combine it into one project. And that project consists of 200 homes for widows, a school for 600 orphans, a uni and TAFE. So when the kids finish from school, they can go and, and learn something to better their future, to help their family and friends. And it consists of a medical centre, so everyone that's there can get treated for free. And inshallah, there's a couple of shops there also that will rent out to people, and that rent will pay for ongoing costs of the maintenance and stuff. Now, since you men uh, mentioned Africa, uh, would the project ever grow bigger than Africa? Of course, this project's my first project. And inshallah, after this project, I'm planning to go to different countries all around the world to help people of every race and every nationality, inshallah. Inshallah. And there's a lot of people out there watching this video and are willing to help, are willing to contribute. What do they need to do? Where do they need to go to contribute to this organization? What we need from the people is just to spread the word about MATW. That's the most important thing. And Whatever you have, like, never think it's too little. Even one dollar can go a long way. Like, one dollar can help a kid for one day. Like, nothing is too small. So whatever you have, try to contribute to this beautiful organization. Uh, the bank details are all over Facebook. Now, you have traveled to Africa previously, part of MATW. Now, were there any experiences that you, you got that you would like to share with the audience? To be honest, the experiences there, you really can't describe how beautiful and amazing it is when you see a little kid that's probably never had anything to smile about. Once you give him a little gift, his, sm his smile shines the world. Like, it's just amazing. What advice would you give to the youth out there that are willing to follow your footsteps? Well, to the youth, I mean, one thing I'll say to the youth is don't feel sorry for me, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted me with this thing. It's changed my life. It's made me a better person. It's made me a more giving person. A, people, a lot of people are feeling sorry for me. He's sick. He's sold his, all his uh, things that he, he, he's ever worked for. But Allah never feel sorry for me. The, this thing, I've chosen to do this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen me. We need to work on ourselves. We need to work on ourselves day in and day out. This project that, we, that I'm gifted with, alhamdulillah, and he, as a Muslim, we should all be doing this day in and day out. And anything else you want to say to the audience, anything that you think, inshallah, will better us as human beings? At the moment, there's not much love in this world. Like, as you see all around the world, people are fighting people, people are killing people, and at the end of the day, these poor little kids just and you're growing up with no father, no mother, and it's our duty to, to sort of take care of these people. So the only advice, I'm not a sheikh, I'm not a scholar, so the only advice I have is to look after your brothers and sisters all around the world and never be greedy with the money that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta has given you. This is not your money. It's not my money, it's not your money. It's the money for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's chosen to give it to you and me to see how we use this money. Ali, it was great speaking with you. As I said, you've been a source of inspiration, you know, not only to me, to hundreds of thousands of other people around the world. And uh, may God help you and keep doing what you're doing. There's people from Hanlo that have come from Australia to bring them food and they are willing to become Muslim. Inshallah today. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Rasulullah.